Hey guys again, got the latest and greatest here from eBay. You probably already figured it out by reading the title description on the video, but it's a little mini Tesla coil. Um, a 24 volt, 15 watt, mini music Tesla coil plasma speaker Tesla wireless transmission board. That's what the uh, eBay listing said. So basically, you can see the coil here, we've got some transistors. It's a small transistor based Tesla coil. It's got provision for our audio input as well, so we can use it like a uh, plasma speaker. Those little plasma tweeters that have the little electric flame and you know, give out the high frequency uh, music and that sort of thing. So I thought um, I'll grab one of these and put it together, see what it does. So you can get a fluorescent tube to light from a distance, you know, the, as you do with the, uh, the Tesla coils, and uh, have some fun. So let's see what we've got inside here. Looks like we've got some instructions. There's our our coil. Really super fine wire, pre-wound, that's convenient. PCB, double-sided. Got a few designators there, so it should be pretty easy to put together. Looks like the coil sits about there. Two heat sinks for our transistors. And um, they even give us a bit of thermal grease. So let's just move that aside for a second and have a look see what they got here now I don't read Chinese that's what it's going to look like at the end you can see there top view and a three-quarter view but I don't read Chinese so good question so I got the schematic here it's a bit messy and all over the place but it's looking like a Slayer exciter circuit we've got the uh, one turn here and then our transistor that's driving through to a uh, 350 turns and gives our high voltage out. Now the high voltage is actually capacitively coupled back to ground um, through the air. The air itself and the air gap um, is what provides the uh, capacitive coupling. So that's our return path. Um, you can see over here this is our 3.5 millimeter jack. It's only using the right uh, audio. The left is just left unconnected. And um, that's coming through and it looks like it just modulates our, um, our oscillator frequency. Um, to give us the uh, audio sound output through our coil and this is just the input jack and then there's like a little like holes where you can put it on the PCB where you can put your um, direct wired connection if you want to have the power directly wired and our VCC and ground so that's um, that's all pretty just standard that's just showing uh, those connections MOSFET transistor a few LEDs for various functions and whatnot and it's just yeah it's just an oscillator with a Slayer exciter pretty simple stuff. So what is a Slayer Exciter circuit anyway? Well, it's a very simple way of stepping up a low voltage, 15 to 24 volts, up to a very high voltage, tens to hundreds of thousands of volts. It was invented a few years ago by two guys, a uh, Dr. Stifler and G. Bluer. Um, I don't know who they are, but props to them. Um, and the the beauty of this circuit is it self resonates. It's like in when you're in a bathroom and you start singing and you get that one note where it all goes very loud, that particular frequency. That's a resonant frequency of that room. This circuit will find its own resonant frequency. Traditional Tesla coils, you need to calculate what that resonant frequency is going to be and you've got to wind your coils and choose your components and that to get everything to resonate at that one frequency. This circuit, you don't need to do that. You can be pretty ballpark with the uh, the components, and it will just find its own frequency and just resonate at that frequency. It's very simple. It's a few LEDs, uh, transistors, and resist resistors, and of course the uh, the main coil. And it just it just works. It's a very simple circuit. It's obviously not going to be as robust and high power as a proper Tesla coil, but um, if you don't need a lot of power, these things are very simple to make. So with that said, let's start building our own. All right. So what I might do. I might go into a time lapse actually. I'll put this together. I'll speed up the video so you don't have to sit here for you know an hour watching me put it together. It'll take five or ten minutes. And um, yeah, at the end, we'll fire up and see if it works. Let's go.
Alright, so that's it done. Um, there's a few little things that I found would have made this a little bit better. One is the uh, capacitor here. It turns out that seems just to be a uh, blocking capacitor, a DC blocking capacitor for the uh, audio input. So um, the lower value that is, then the more bass is going to come through to the circuit. So they gave me a 1 microfarad here. It specifies a 10 microfarad on the um, schematic. Um, so I just grabbed a 10 microfarad out of the uh, the parts bin, but if you uh, play with that, it'll change just the amount of bass that's coming through here from the uh, the input jack. So not a critical value really. Um, also, this wire here was very tight. Like it, they they gave just enough length on that this uh, single turn here. So um, on the schematic or oh, picture, sorry, you can see it's looped up rather high. Um, and I'll unfold that. With mine, it's not so high. It's down the bottom. It's not really going to make much of a difference, I don't think. But um, yeah, that was a little bit tight, but it it fit anyway. So we've got our input jack here, or our input wire here for our um, audio. And all we need to do is supply 24 volts, I believe, 15 to 24 volts in here. All right, so I've got myself a 24 volt power brick. This is a 2.71 amp, it's saying here. Um, the circuit apparently requires 2 amps, so we've got a bit of uh, reserve power, which is not a bad thing. So I'll plug this in here first, and then I'll plug the power in and see what happens. I'll just get that wire sticking up. I'll plug it in, and then um, we'll have a look at it from the top view. Uh, then I'll reposition the camera. I'll turn the lights off actually, there's a little bit of a corona going on. I don't know if you can see it right at the very top there. I'm not going to put my finger too close to it. It's a little corona discharge going on. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put the camera in a different orientation. I'll look from the side and we'll zoom in on that corona and just have a, a closer look. I'm looking from a side view. The corona discharge will be just around here somewhere. Um, I'm going to hold my hand behind and I'll point to it from behind so I'm not too close. And you'll see it come up just in a sec. There it is. So just here. My, my hand is probably about six inches behind um, so I'm not getting too close, but the camera makes it look like I'm a lot closer than I am. So I'm a safe distance, but you can just see the purple glow here. There's a lot of more glow coming from the thing. Um, that's basically from the red and blue LEDs that are lighting up. I might do something about that. Hide those LEDs because they're a bit, they're a bit, I don't know, ugly. What I'll do is I'll, I'll zoom in right on, on this uh, corona discharge, and we'll see what that looks like. Right, so that's about as close as I can get um, and still keep it in focus. You can just see the top of the coil, um, the former, at the bottom of the screen there. And in high definition, you better see the thin, hair fine wire going up to the corona in the middle. That corona is probably about 3 millimeters tall or so. Um, you can see what it is. It's not working too bad at all. Doing its job, so yeah, it's just, just a bare copper wire. It sort of gets a bit hot just on the very end and burns the enamel, so Maybe I'll look at getting a sharp little pin or something, you know, like a steel pin that will give a nice consistent sharp point to then create the corona from. But it's working as it is for now, so yeah, it looks pretty cool, I reckon. All right, well, let's have a look at um, making some things glow, hey? See what we can um, find around the place to see if we can get things lighting up like lightsabers. I've got some stuff collected here. We've got a, a vacuum fluorescent display, just from a VCR. Might get something out of that. We got a neon, just a neon bulb here. That's what was uh, just applied with the kit, so I guess this will work if we 
poke it up there. Just something to play with, they give you. Got some electroluminescent wire. It's a pretty long piece, but we'll see what happens. Just some plastic tube with the uh, phosphor inside. And we've got ourselves a cold cathode fluorescent tube. Just like what's used in LC screens and stuff, you know, the old backlights. So let's fire this thing up and see what we can make glow. There we go. So we'll try the uh, vacuum for fluorescent display first. See if we get something happening. Nothing. Extinguish the arc actually. Nah, no, fail. Alright, how about the neon? Let's try this this little neon tube. So I'll put one wire one way and the other. Oh, look at that. That's that's actually pretty bright. What I'll do is I'll turn the lights off. We can see this stuff better. You can see it's pretty dark, but if I bring it in, look at that. That's glowing pretty pretty hot. So that's a win. Okay, electroluminescent wire. What do we got from this? Most that that's actually lighting up, just catching the light and fluorescing on the screen. That's a lot brighter on screen than what it is in real life. There's not much of a glow happening from the from the arc. So that's a bit of a fail. And how about our tube? Dunk! Look at that. That's what we're talking about. Bit of a lightsaber action. Woo 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 woo. Yeah, nice. So that's you can see there's actually no connection there. You can see the little corona discharge down the bottom, just about a a centimeter or so below the tube. There's an air gap between. Actually, I might be able to demonstrate that with a piece of paper. I see that. Still lit. There's nothing between. If I move it away, you can see it shrinks down towards my hand. That's because my hand is providing the capacitive coupling to ground. So as we move away, we get less power coming from the um, from the coil because you know, inverse square law and all that. So we getting less of a a connection sort of thing, a less power transfer, and it can only light up a small amount of the phosphor until we just extinguish. But as we come real close, we're getting a lot more power. So as we move away, less. Come closer. Yeah, you can see that there. That's pretty cool. Where's that neon? The same with the neon, I would say. That's lit up. Yeah, it's gone real dim. Right there, extinguished. Cool, alright. I'll turn these lights back on. And let's get some music playing. Alright, so I've got my Galaxy Note 4 here. It's not the 7, so it's not explosive. We're all safe. Plug straight into the uh, audio input over here. And our Corona is corona -ing. Just on the top there. Our LEDs are shining blue light everywhere. So let's start this uh, audio and see what we get. <laughs> it's, it's pretty shit, but it's it's working. There's definitely sound. Well, I'm going to give this one a thumbs up. Because for a $10 eBay kit, it does actually work as advertised. We're getting a Corona and we can play our music. So, um, there you go. Pretty cool. I definitely recommend getting one and having a play. Just be careful with that high voltage, that's all. Alright guys, we'll see you next time.